One of the biggest advantages of using Excel 365 is that, unlike the standalone versions of Excel, we have access to a really handy online portal. And you can access the online portal through any browser wherever you have an active internet connection. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to fire up a browser. I'm going to use Microsoft Edge, but if you prefer to use something like Google Chrome, then that's not a problem. And then we can either go to Microsoft.com or Office.com. Now I'm going to go to Office.com simply because that's what I'm used to going to. Now notice that mine logs me straight into my online portal. It might be that you get taken to a sign in screen where you'll be asked to enter in your email address and your password. And the sign in credentials that you use is basically the email address that you assign to your Microsoft 365 subscription during the setup phase. So type in your email address and your password and it's going to jump you to the screen that I'm in now. Now once again, yours might look slightly different or it will look different to mine because this main page is kind of like a hub that shows you all of your latest activity. Now, if this is the first time that you're logging into Microsoft 365, then it might be fairly empty in here. You're not going to have any recommended documents. You might not even have any recently opened in the list below. But in general, this is what you're going to see. You're going to have a recommended section at the top. And again, these are just files that I've opened recently. We then have a quick access area at the bottom with various different filters to allow us to find files that we might want to open quickly. Notice we have a recently opened list, files that have been shared with us, and we can also add any file into our favorites list. Notice that I also have an Excel filter just here. So if I click this, it's going to show me only Excel files. Because remember, when you're working in the Microsoft 365 portal, this includes all files. So things like Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, not just simply Excel. And if we click the plus here, we can set up more content filters to filter that list of files. For example, if I want to have a filter that filters just Word documents, I can set that up as well. So I can toggle between just seeing Excel files and just seeing Word documents. Also notice at the top, we have a search bar. This is a universal search. So whatever keywords we type in here, it's going to search across all applications in Microsoft 365 for content that matches. And that might be files. You can see here, I have all the files that contain the word sales. It might be bookmarks. So obviously I've got the word sales included in here somewhere. It's also found any people that have the word sales in their job title. And it's also found a couple of SharePoint sites which contain the word sales. So don't forget that this is a universal search when you're working in the hub. Now the hub is a centralized area that you can come to to access all of the online versions of your applications. Notice on the left hand side, we have a big long list of different apps that we can access. And if we click the app launcher, which is that little thing that looks a little bit like a waffle in the top left hand corner, that's going to show us all of our apps. Hi from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course and gain access to over 200 courses ad free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. Now the list of apps that you see in here will vary depending on the type of Microsoft subscription that you signed up for. For example, I have a business standard Microsoft 365 account, which includes things like SharePoint and Teams, applications that are more geared to business use. If you have a personal subscription, you'll find that you won't have things like that, but you will always have access to Outlook, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, so on and so forth. So just be aware of that. The main point is your list might not look exactly the same as mine. So we can use this apps list to open any of our applications in a browser. So let's open up Excel because what you'll notice is that a new tab opens and I'm basically taken to Excel online. And this is why Excel 365 is more flexible than the regular standalone versions of Excel. With those versions, we can only access Excel on our computer. Whereas with Excel for Microsoft 365, we can simply do exactly what we've done here. Fire up a browser, go to the portal and launch Excel. So if I'm sitting on a train, as long as I've got a Wi-Fi connection, I can still work on my documents without having to be at my desk. 
So from here, I could fire up a blank workbook and it takes me into a pretty comprehensive version of Excel. Now there's a couple of things to be aware of when you're working in the online versions. You might not necessarily have access to all of the functionality that you'll find in the desktop version. And I will say this has greatly improved over the years. More and more features have been added to Excel online to bring it more in line with the full version. But I will say that if you're just wanting to take a look at spreadsheets, make minor edits, we can do all of our formatting from here. We can insert pivot tables, charts, pretty much most of the things we're going to want to do when we're on the go, we can find in this version. But you will find that some of the more complex stuff isn't always available. The other thing to know about working within the online portal is that everything automatically saves. So what you'll notice is that if we click the file button, we don't actually have a save button. We only have a save as button. And that's because if I start typing in here, so let's just say I type in date and we'll say product, everything saves automatically back to the cloud. So I don't have to remember to press control S to save or go to file save. What we do need to do though is rename the file because notice here it just says book two. But if we click up here, we can do that very simply. So I'm just going to call this test one. Notice the location. It's saving it into my OneDrive into my documents folder. And I can hit enter to give that file a name. When we close down this Excel file, and we just do that by closing the browser window, if we were to now go back to our Office 365 homepage, and let's take a look at all of our documents, notice there is test one at the top. If I want to jump back into it to edit, I can simply click to open it up and I can make my changes. So let's just make these headings bold. Again, everything saves. I don't need to do anything else. I can simply close it down and those changes will be saved. So when you're working in Excel for Microsoft 365, just be aware that everything saves back to OneDrive to the cloud and all changes are automatically saved. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.